everybody, welcome to Auto Scholar with Mr. B. I'm Mr. B. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel. And of course, as always, if this video teaches you anything, please give it a like at the bottom and hit your notification button. So today I have something special for you. It is going to be a lesson on hybrid vehicles. So I have my trainer here. This is a console lab trainer that I use to train my students with. And I am going to go over the power flow of this and exactly what the engine and transmission and the motor generators and everything are doing as we're driving a Prius through uh, all the different driving modes that it can go through. So uh, this engine right here is from a Gen 3 Prius engine transmission. Uh, and it is a uh, Gen 3 is 2010 through 2015. Uh, it is a 1.8 liter uh, 2ZRF XE four cylinder. I'm sorry, that's a mouthful to get out there. Uh, but this engine has variable valve timing. It's an Atkinson style engine. And of course, it is mated to a hybrid Synergy drive from Toyota. So, what I'm planning to do is I'm going to move my camera up here. I'm going to show you the trainer, kind of how it works, and all the pieces that we're going to be dealing with today. And then we're going to go through step by step of every drive cycle. I'll show you what's turning, what's not what the motor generators are doing and if the battery is receiving power or if it's giving power. So should be pretty good if you don't understand how a hybrid works. This may help you out a little more. If you're a technician that's just getting into working on hybrids, there is a lot of things you need to know and not a whole lot of people out there that are teaching it. So I thought I'd go ahead and put this video together with uh, the help of my trainer and let's get some information rolling on these hybrids because they are coming. So. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna pull this camera up. I'll get it closer to the hybrid uh, trainer so you can see, and we'll go from there. Okay, so this is pretty much the, the side of the trainer we were gonna be using today. I'll show you a couple other things on the other sides, but this trainer is encased in glass. Uh, that way, you know, we can't put our fingers in there and get them mashed up in, inside all the gears that turn on the inside. And uh, just one thing I wanna point out is these large chains that you see on the ends here and in the middle, that's part of the trainer. That's not actually part of the Prius, but this is what turns the internals of this and gives us a good view of what things look like when they're running in their different drive modes. So up top right here, I'm going to use my laser pointer so we can kind of see. This is your inverter converter. And this right here takes the, uh, and, and it actually manages as well, all of the voltage going through the car. So you have your traction battery in the trunk, your large, you know, expensive battery, that's operating you know, a little over 200 volts. And so this inverter converter will uh, change that voltage over to 12 volts to use throughout the car for our 12 volt system. It'll change it over to another voltage for our air conditioning compressor that runs off of electricity instead of a belt. And of course it provides and transforms power from MG1, which is right here. There's your MG1 and MG2, which is on the end right here, that's the larger of the two motor generators. And MG stands for motor generator. So we have one right here, and we have two on the end. Now in between MG1 and MG2, we have this right here, which is actually operates as uh, kind of the output of the transmission, and it's called a power split device. And what you see there is two planetary gear sets that are uh, facing each other and they are connected to different parts of the motor generators and output shaft or crankshaft of the engine. So the internal combustion engine, which is some call, sometimes called an ICE. So all this orange wiring that you see here is our high voltage wiring. And uh, that is wires that you need to watch out for if you have the battery connected in the vehicle, if you have the high voltage battery connected in the vehicle. So, um, you have your connectors up here, this orange, and of course all the orange that's in the, the battery uh, itself. You need to be very careful with that, that will hurt you, okay? Right here, down here, we have our service plug that we would remove uh, if we were working on this vehicle, and I do recommend removing that pretty much for any repair. Uh, it is gonna keep uh, you the safest, and also if you're doing any, any uh, huge repair work, you want to go ahead and disconnect the 12 volt battery that is in the trunk as well because this engine can start up for any time for any reason as long as the key's near it and 
I don't want to be doing an oil change and the engine start up when I got the oil out of the vehicle. So you definitely want to, uh, you know, disconnect everything to make sure that there's no problem there. Or, you know, even worse, if you have your hand somewhere and, and the engine starts up, you can possibly hurt yourself or someone else. So keep that in mind. Also, uh, I, I did mention that this has an electric AC compressor, so no belt there. Uh, some hybrids do have the, the belt and the electric part. They're hybrid compressors. That's what they call them, but they are on hybrids. And of course, we have an electric water pump as well. So really, there's very few belt-driven anything on this engine. We have electronic power steering. And of course, we do not have uh, another thing that, that is different from these vehicles is we do not have a starter because MG1 acts as our starter. And of course, we don't have an alternator because we have MG1 and MG2 that are, that are there to provide us with power generation back to our, excuse me, our traction battery. And then that provides uh, 12 volts out of the inverter to our 12 volt system. So, okay, let me show you the control panel of this so you can kind of see the different drive modes, how they're laid out. And then we'll, we'll start putting these into drive modes and I'm going to discuss what's going on inside, why we're doing certain things with this car. Okay, so this is the control panel for our trainer. And uh, I'm really just showing you this because it has a very good layout of how the power goes in and out of this vehicle. And uh, because this is a trainer, it's the, the engine, on the inside and the uh, transmission in MG1 and 2 are not gonna be spinning like in real life they would be spinning, okay? So we do have the chains that turn all this stuff inside and it's more just a visual representation than actually how fast it turns. So we have our, our lights up here that'll tell exactly what's going on uh, in the driving mode, whether we're doing regen, MG1 or MG2 regen, whether the battery's charging, if the engine's cold, whatever. And then we have our driving modes here, which I'm going to list. Um, engine start, low speed, low acceleration, or what we call stealth mode, normal driving, or uh, just cruising. We have our high speed, uh, full throttle acceleration. So this is, you know, if you're passing a vehicle or if you're, you're trying to go a little faster. Uh, you have your high speed energy recirculation. This is where, you know, we're, we're going down the highway at a higher speed. Of course, coasting, that's your foot's not on the brake or the gas. And regenerative braking, so this is going to kick in uh, as soon as we put our foot on the brake and then, of course, reverse at the top. And so put the car in neutral and let's go ahead and get into an engine start. Okay, a couple things about engine start. I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna do reverse last, but I'm going down to engine start. Uh, one thing, again, to remember, a Prius has no electric starter like a conventional vehicle does. And the engine can start anytime. You gotta disable the traction and the 12 volt battery when you're doing any repairs or you have your hand in the engine or anything like that. So uh, sometimes when pressing the start button, your engine's actually not going to, to start up. Your, your, your internal combustion engine will not turn on because it doesn't need it at the time. So, it will turn on if you have a lot of, of high draw items on, like your air conditioning, uh, or if your battery's low, or if your engine's cold. So for this trainer, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this to cold, turn the power on, and then I'm going to crank the vehicle with the start stop. Let me just go ahead and do that. I can put my foot on a little brake pedal over here. And we are running, okay? So, we're showing our battery voltage here at 202 volts. That's about as high as it's gonna get. Engine RPM is gonna be running at about 1300. Again, we're gonna run a little bit higher RPM if the engine's cold simply to warm it up quicker. And you see the MG1 RPM is running at 4680 RPM. And that is uh, geared next to the, the dampener that's coming out of the engine. I'm gonna show you that here in a second. But you'll notice the MG2 is not turning and of course our vehicle speed is zero. So let's go ahead and take a look on the inside of the trainer and see what happens. Just at idle, we're just parked, our engine's cold, and uh, our internal combustion engine is running. Okay, so here we are again at idle. And this is our damper here, and it is turning, and that's going to be connected directly to the crankshaft. So our engine is turning, uh, we are burning gas, and so inside, 
MG1 right here. I don't know if you can see the laser, but MG1's right here. And this stator is turning, and it's turning because the engine is rotating, okay? So that is generating power, and it's putting it into our traction battery or our high voltage battery, okay? So the MG1 has a somewhat of a direct link to the, to the flywheel. And it also, of course, this is going to act as the starter of the vehicle, so this will get the engine turning, okay? And um, after a while, if the engine is warmed up and the battery is charged, the car will, the, the internal combustion engine will shut off. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just switch it to warm. So the engine is warmed up. Right now we're still putting, I got 202 volts showing and MG1 is turning zero RPMs. Engine is turning zero RPMs. Now, if you sit here long enough with your AC on, your radio on, your headlights on, blower motor on, windshield wipers on, whatever, the engine will eventually crank back up because the battery will, will start to die down and it will need to start generating electricity again because this car cannot have a dead battery. If, a, if the traction battery goes dead in this car, you're gonna have a whole heap of trouble. So the car is gonna try to keep it around, you know, 20 to 80% charge. You never wanna charge it all the way up to 100% because you need that cushion for regeneration. And you don't wanna to go too low because then you start having electrical problems with the vehicles and the control modules. So this is pretty much engine start. It's, it's where, you know, pretty much everyone is going to begin their drive in their Prius. Okay, so when we start out, we're gonna put our car in drive. So I'm gonna click this into drive. And then we are gonna start low speed or low acceleration or what we call stealth mode, okay? So I'm gonna put this on steady state. And that, all this does is just, it holds what the engine is doing as far as the, the state that it's in. So that's not actually a button on the car. This is just a trainer button itself. And so now we see our battery voltage is starting to go down, okay? Because we're putting power to MG2 now, okay? MG2 is the big, uh, big motor, and MG1 is the small motor that's near the engine. So both of those are at 460 RPM. Engine RPM is at zero because it's not on, okay? So MG2 drives the wheels, engine's off, electricity flows from the high voltage battery to the inverter and then goes to the MG2. This is good for like low speed city driving. Now I have it at four miles per hour, but you can actually get a little bit faster with this. Uh, in the parking lot, stuff like that, this is where we're gonna go with, uh, with the stealth mode. And they call it stealth mode because the engine's not on, the car is very quiet, and uh, there's not a, a, a whole lot of sound to it. I guess, I guess you can sneak up on somebody uh, if you wanted to. So got this in drive, engine's warm, uh, and again, none of this is changing, but we can go ahead and take this off steady state, and then let me see if I can reach the gas pedal here. So now my engine started, okay? And we're seeing MG2's 1,620 RPM. MG1 is at 200, right? Because we have my, our, our engine is being pushed by MG2. And so let's go back to low speed, low acceleration. And I'll show you what the engine's doing there. And then we'll go to normal driving. So this is stealth mode, low speed. And we have MG2 is applying power to its stator right here. And it is going to turn our, our power split device. And that is going to turn our output shaft. And I'm going to go to the other side and I'll show you the other side. And uh, it has a little small wheel that's simulating the, the car that actually moves. Now, of course, this would be going a lot faster in real life, but our trainer only goes so fast, so this is about it. So in all actuality, that MG2 would be turning this area 460 RPM, which is much faster than that. That's probably like a half a RPM. Seems like very slow. So let's go to the other side of the engine and see what, what's going on in the differential. So on this side, we see that this is the, the differential part of the transaxle. 
and we see this this is moving very slow i don't even know if you can see it moving at all once we get up to the higher speed acceleration this spins faster but we have our little tire over here to the right that is that is turning that is actually acting as uh, the tire that would be on the ground and so these gears connect directly to mg2 and they are going to drive this which is going to drive the wheel matter of fact you can see right here this is the end of the cv axle that they had cut off to make this trainer so this is where the cv axles would go right through here and that's where literally the rubber meets the road Okay, so we're coming out of low speed and low acceleration, and we're going to go into normal driving. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out of steady state. Let's get it up to, I don't know, let's get it up to about, Okay, so we're turning 32 miles per hour. Now, our battery is charging. That's different, right? And MG1 is going into regen. So MG2 and the internal combustion engine are providing the power to the wheels when we're just normally driving, you know, 30, 40, 50 miles per hour. This is our basic, you know, driving in a residential area type power, okay? so. The engine is also going to turn MG1 and it's going to send generate electricity to either the traction battery, if the traction battery is low, which our, our, our battery is charging, so it's starting to charge that up, or it's going to send it directly to our MG2, uh, which is going to help power to the wheels. So power generated by the internal combustion engine is always split through the planetary gear set that's in between MG1 and MG2. And that's why it's called a power split device. So MG1 and, and, the, and the wheel output both get power from the engine. So we're turning MG1 and we're turning the, the, the wheel output. So our little tire should be moving a little bit faster now on this. Let me go ahead and show you what the uh, business side is looking like when we have a normal driving mode or what we call cruising. Okay, so we can see that our engine right here, our internal combustion engine is running now because that dampener is moving, okay? So again, we're generating power with MG1 and MG1 is gonna send that either to the traction battery or it's gonna send it directly to MG2. Now, what makes that decision, okay? Well, your inverter is gonna make that decision and the control modules inside it are gonna make that decision. So depending on the battery charge, depending on uh, the power needed, or whatnot, the MG2 will get that power or the battery pack itself or traction battery will get that power. So MG2 is right here. It's applying power to, again, that little, it's, it's going through the gears. Remember the gears we saw on the other side? And our power split device is deciding how much the engine is powering to the wheels and it's manipulated again by MG1 and MG2. So let's go around to, uh, the control panel again, and we'll look at the next driving mode. Okay, so our next driving mode is going to be high speed and full throttle acceleration, okay? So the high voltage battery and MG1 is gonna send power to MG2, okay? The internal combustion engine and MG2 are gonna team up and put all available power to the wheels, okay? Especially if we're in a really hard acceleration. And the engine, of course, is going to go into its strategies to maximize power through, you know, variable valve timing, uh, ignition spark timing, and, uh, you know, if you have a variable intake, of course, it's going to uh, change that as well. So let's go ahead and we are going to high speed, full throttle. So I'm gonna punch it. Y'all ready? Let's do it. Okay, so we are now in solid state, I mean, excuse me, steady state, and our vehicle speed is at 50, okay? Notice we're not charging the battery, we're not regenerating anything, we are full power, okay? So we've got everything this car has going to the wheels right now. Engine RPM's at 2600, which of course we can go a lot faster than that. Our vehicle speed is at 50. MG2 RPM is going to be 10, uh, excuse me. 5790 and 36 
50. And so this is pretty much gonna look the same if we go over and look at this as our normal drive. But the difference is, is where the power goes through uh, and everything just goes to MG2, okay? Because we want full engine power and MG2, we, we add that together and this is what makes this car, you know, even though it's a hybrid, these are, are fairly peppy on the road and, and they're very similar to driving, you know, the Corolla or the Camry. So, you know, you do have times where you have to put the hammer down on these cars and, and this makes sure that you can get into that, um, that realm, okay? Okay, so our next drive mode is what we call high speed energy recirculation or heretical overdrive mode, depending on who you ask and who you talk to is what they call this, but we're gonna call it high speed energy recirculation. So as the car is going faster and faster and faster, the car will enter this energy recirculation mode. And this is going to be decrease the speed, whoops. It's gonna to be to uh, decrease the speed at which the uh, engine is operating at RPM wise, okay? Because we can over rev the engine through our motor generator. So we definitely wanna make sure that we don't do that. So let me go ahead and crank this car back up here. I accidentally turned it off. Oop, wait, I gotta put it in neutral just like a real car. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put it in drive. And um, so when this is happening, you're gonna see MG1 over here. This is gonna go in the opposite rotation, okay? Because it's going to load up on this engine is going to try to slow this engine down. So when we do this, we're generating a lot of power, okay? And with that happening, all the power either goes, you know, into MG2 again to get rid of it because we can't overpower. So we can't, we, you know, we can't overpower, but this is going to act like an overdrive, okay? And uh, with, with that, the MG2 is going to be uh, spinning fast. MG1 is going to be spinning fast. And we're going to be generating a lot of power, but of course we're going to be losing a lot of power as well through the MG2. So let's go ahead and get this thing up to high speed. No, oh, I'm in steady state. So we're putting the pedal to the metal. We're going through the drive, normal drive, high speed. There we go. All right, so we are in high speed energy recirculation. So right now we're doing 100 miles per hour in this car. And our MG2 is actually 10 times that. So we're at 11,058, okay? And we're, we're going into regen because we're actually, the engine's pushing this. Remember, we're at 3,000 RPM over here. And the engine is pushing this. And so we're up to 100 miles per hour. MG1 RPM is slowing down this to this, okay? And we're, we're going in the opposite rotation here. This is that MG1 here, and the stator is going in the opposite rotation, okay? And we are cooking with gas. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the engine's doing while we're doing this. Okay, so engine's going because we see this gray damper here moving. Right? MG1 and MG2 are both going. MG2 is getting regenerated as it turns. And this is what we call recirculated. So MG2 is actually generating power and giving power out. Okay, and that's just so we don't overcharge this battery pack. Remember, we can't get it over 80%. Now, if you're going down a hill or something like that, and you're going pretty fast and your car can't regen anymore, you can actually use the internal combustion engine as a brake as well, okay? And of course, we're gonna get into regenerative braking here in a minute, but uh, this is just to keep the engine RPM down and the car going at a fast speed, okay? Because we don't want that engine to, to over rev or, you know, and of course this, if we keep the RPM down lower in the engine, we're gonna keep our fuel economy better as well. This is why regular gasoline vehicles have an overdrive, but since we don't have gears in our transmission, traditional gears, we don't have an overdrive. This is what we have to do to put the vehicle in overdrive. Okay, so we are at high speed. Now we are going 100 miles per hour 
and we need to slow down, don't we? That's going way too fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out of steady state and I'm going to pop it right back in because we're going to go down to coasting. And so when you remove your foot from the gas and the brake, the car is still in motion, okay? And remember back from our physics coursework that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can be transformed. So we're taking this, this heavy car that we're pushing down the road 100 miles per hour, okay? And I've used a lot of energy to get this thing up to 100 miles per hour. And this is how I get it back, okay? And that's the coolest thing about these hybrid vehicles is we can get back so much wasted energy that normal, a normal vehicle would just wait and you know turn to heat through the braking system. We can get this through regenerative and coasting, okay? So as we let our foot off the gas and the brake, MG2, the, the, the big motor generator, is gonna be loaded up and enter into a regenerative mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off steady state. We're gonna go to coasting, I'm gonna turn it back on. So now, matter of fact, I'll just turn this on. We'll just let it ride down. So now 92, 90, 88, 86, 84. So let's just cut it off there and you can see the car is starting to slow down. So our battery is charging through MG2 regen, okay? And we're slowing down because we're putting a load on this. It's going opposite rotation, okay? We're still turning 9,500 RPM. That's a lot of RPM. And we're generating this power, putting this power back into the battery, okay? And notice our engine is still running because it, it might not know what's going on, okay? So it may need to stay running because it doesn't know what you're gonna do next. And so let's look and see what everything looks like here. So everything's pretty much gonna look the same as your high-speed energy recirculation. Uh, but the car is going to be, of course, slowing down. So this, this will be generally starting to slow down as well. And so this is almost like when you're driving a manual transmission vehicle and you're down, you know, downshifting and you're letting the engine brake run off uh, the, the, the speed that you've put into the car. Okay, but uh, with this and regenerative braking uh, is, is pretty much... Uh, the only vehicles that use this are going to be your hybrid vehicles. There's really no use in this in any other application. So this is what helps charge your battery, keep your battery charged up. And it helps your fuel economy because now I can take that power that I put into the battery. I can take it back out, put it back into MG2, and I can, I can drive again. So again, this is just recapturing the energy that we've done spent our money on through, you know, gasoline and it's turning it into electrical energy. And then we'll take that elect electrical energy and turn it into electromotive force and put it back into this motor so we can turn our wheels again. Okay, so if we're coasting, 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 uh, eventually we're gonna have to stop, okay? So when we stop, you know, applying the brake pedal will cause the MG2 to enter into a regenerative braking mode, which it pretty much already is because it's coasting. Okay, so uh, the ABS computer is going to take over uh, the braking aspect of the vehicle and it's going to apply hydraulic pressure to the braking system. And so all of this is going to be controlled by uh, different computers in the vehicle. Okay, and there's no mechanical connection from the brake pedal to the brake system when all this is happening. Okay, this is all just decided through the brake actuator and the ABS module. Okay, and so we put this drag on this MG2 and we're, we're fighting. So basically MG2 is going to be fighting the, the, the wheels from turning. It's going to try to stop the wheels from turning. So I'm going to go ahead and take it off steady state and I'll put the brake pedal on. We're going to regen. So you see vehicle speeds going down. MG2 is regeneration right here into the battery. Okay, and eventually opposite rotation, opposite rotation down to zero. Okay, and so when we stop the vehicle, um, all that power is going to go back into the battery pack. Okay, and there's really nothing to see on the machine on the other side of that. I just wanted to show you basically the control systems there. Uh, so this regenerative braking is why these vehicles, you know, I've, I've heard of people going 200,000 miles without having to replace their brake pads because they're using that that MG2 resistance against the wheels and the axles in the car. And you're using that to power the car, but you're also using it to slow the vehicle as well, okay? So 
Um, but what happens if we've got so much voltage and we're going down a mountain, uh, you know, pass? I don't know if you've ever been, you know, during, in the mountains, uh, but you have to use your brakes a lot going down the mountain. And so there is, on most of these, these Priuses, there is an option on your steering, uh, not your steering, but your gear shift that says B, okay? And B is for engine braking. So basically you can use the engine braking. Now it will do it automatically as well. Uh, and that keeps the battery from getting overcharged, okay? Because even when the, on your instrument panel, when the battery says that you have 100% charge, it's really not 100% charge. It's really about an 80% charge. If you look on the scan tool, you can see on these vehicles that there's a discrepancy between what the scan tool says and what the customer sees, okay? Because 80% is 100% for these vehicles. It's going to make the battery last longer and it's gonna be better for the vehicle, okay? And it's gonna, it, again, uh, you can hear about that a lot, and especially with the, the old nickel CAD batteries that we had in appliances and cell phones and stuff like that. You, you would have to run the, the, the phone all the way down and charge it back up and stuff like that. And that was healthier for the battery. Well, it's the same for these as well. So we have to remember to, uh, you know, make sure that, and, and the, the car is going to do that itself. So, uh, but other than that, really, there's, there's not a whole lot else to talk about in reverse when we go in reverse mg2 is just going to spin backwards and it's going to put the car out and most of the time the engine doesn't have to run to do that so just remember that for reverse is uh when we go into reverse um you know our engines at rpm zero mg1 of course is going to be at a certain rpm because it's hooked to the engine and mg2 and it's going to be a direct drive and both of those are going to turn everything and make the car go backwards. It just works in reverse. Okay, that's the good thing about electric motors. I can, as soon as I just switch polarity, I can make it run in reverse. So uh, that's pretty much it. I know I, I probably simplified, simple as I made things too simple. Um, and uh, that's fine. If you have any questions, of course, you can always leave them in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. I may go a little deeper into this a little bit later. Okay, so that about does it for Auto Scholar Mr. B for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick lesson on the Prius and the Gen 3 drivetrain. So if you have any questions, again, leave them in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I'm planning to do a lot more of these hybrid themed videos because we are going through and we are creating a curriculum for the state of Georgia for the electric and hybrid vehicles. So I'm really getting deep into this and I want to share my knowledge because there's a lot of people that don't know how these work, and there's a lot of technicians that are afraid of these. And I'm here to tell you, don't be afraid of these, okay? Uh, the more be afraid of the unknown, and then there's a really good way to fix that is to learn, okay? So as far as getting hurt or anything like that, these cars um, are not that dangerous as long as you know what you're doing and you follow the instructions and the service information and the safety protocols that go into making these cars safe. So. That's gonna be it for us today. If you're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or VK, look up Auto Scholar or Mr. B. I'm there, I'm constantly putting content up there and trying to keep you guys entertained on there as well. So check me out there, like me up or subscribe or thumbs up or whatever uh, the platform requires. And uh, if you have any questions, again, don't be afraid to ask. There's no such thing as a stupid question when it comes to something this complex. So we'll see you next time on Auto Scholar and Mr. Bean.